Ever since the human race has introduced objects into tag, some of the oldest games the human race has come up with have been card games. Whether it be blackjack, poker, or the most violent, go fish, card games are a template that can be applied to almost any idea that we can come up with. Nowadays, you can play poker with people across the world and still lose your life savings. Technology is amazing! They bring the family together for a night of fun unlike anything else, playing with the pages in your hand, watching your grandmother's soul getting sucked into a book. Library of Ruinia! Hello everyone, my name is Chicker, a lover of chickens and a king of them myself, and today I will be talking about your grandmother's abductor, Library of Ruinia. Or is it Ruin A? Or Ruin Ya? Or is it just lore? Welcome to the library. Angela is back along with all of your favorite characters from your own personal hell. <laughs> hell yeah. I have been afraid of even touching this game for months just because of the phobia I've developed for the crinkling sound of the pages in every single book. My own therapist has even begun to question my sanity as I talk to her about the concept of shoving Jeffrey from math class into a 6x9 red hardcover binding. This is a deck building game with a unique combat system that's easy to learn but really hard to master, built around the idea of collecting the pages from your defeated enemies. Now, the lore of lore, <laughs> let's see what I did there, is pretty uh, not normal, especially if you don't understand who these people are or what the fuck is going on. It's okay. No one knows what the fuck is going on. You are introduced to this crazy world through Roland, who finds himself in the library and is immediately meted by probably some of the best hosting I've seen since the 1800s. Ah, so you must go go long, go long. Like I said, best hosting. Roland is a fixer. Fixers are your friendly handyman who helps around taking odd jobs from other people, such as fixing your sink, replacing a light bulb, or committing homicide, or committing homicide or committing hop. Roland is extremely knowledgeable on the world outside of the library, which makes him a great expository dump for the player and Angela. While having a character dump this much story is usually done poorly, they pull it off well with Roland, making him useful for something else besides which restaurant to go to for a Friday night. You also get to meet other characters through the perspectives of Roland, which is refreshing for returning fans, but is also done well for new players. Once again, each character follows the tree of life, each one representing a branch on the tree, except now, each one is a floor of the library, separating the books you get dependent on the department of that floor. Angela was a bit in the first game, but it's okay, because Angela says that wasn't her and blames everything she did on a script that would repeat constantly if she didn't follow it. And honestly, if I had to go through a script again and again and again and again and again like that, I would get pretty pissed off too. So I guess this game can be seen as the justification of all of the bullshit in Lobotomy Corp by sprouting more bullshit on top of it. I love these games. Library of Ruinia is the sequel to the amazing game Lobotomy Corp, a game that took the idea of a colony sim and turned it into something completely unique. I also made a video about it. So the question is, does this game follow in its predecessor's footsteps? Well, the topic is debatable, I could make a whole video on it if I wanted to. I would say yes. Like the previous game, it weaves its story and the gameplay elements nicely so nothing feels out of place. The terms used in the gameplay make sense in the context given within the world, which is something a majority of games do, but it's a valuable signal when looking for good writing. One of the strongest aspects of the sequel is that you don't need to play Lobotomy Corp in order to understand the story. Sure, you will be missing out on some things and maybe necessary context at some points, but you don't need it to enjoy the game. This game does an amazing job of taking what's already there and expanding upon it. While the first game only gives you information on a need-to-know basis, this game is constantly diving into the world and learning about it. This game gives you the chance to explore and discover the world, all from the comfort of your reading chair. This game will make you experience every emotion that you have felt from Lobotomy Corp. But instead of watching a snail move in a race, you're watching fireworks go directly into your fucking eyes. It's the best! Yeah! 
Vanessa! Oh! You progress the game through completing receptions. A reception is just tending to your guests' needs in the library by brutally unaliving them. After completing a reception, you receive the books of that guest or their soul. You can then burn these books to receive pages from them. Just don't worry about the implication. When you burn a book, you gain pages. Pages are what this game calls cards. On the card, they will have the cost, the range, and the dice on the card. All cards will either do damage, defend, or some combination between the two. There are three types of damage in this game, slashing, piercing, and blunt, or my favorite version of how I call them, knife, hammer, and gun. While there are two types to defend, block, and dodge, you also have a chance to receive a key page. These are essentially the classes in the game. Each one provides their own stats and benefits behind them. When you collect enough of these, you can begin adding benefits of other pages with one another and create some pretty crazy builds. Each librarian has their own deck, which you can edit and modify. And if creating 50 unique decks in this game feels like a bit much for you, the community has some incredible guides for this game to help you out. So you can play the game and not have to stress out about the deck building part of it. Now that you have some idea of what the pages are, let's talk about receptions. To start a reception, you have to burn books. Whoever gets the invitation to the library depends on the books you burn. And after you send the invitation, you can begin the reception. Before the reception actually starts, you get a chance to see what you're going up against and get to choose which floor they get to go up against. When you believe you're ready, you can begin the stage play. Each stage play is split up in scenes or turns or rounds, whatever you want to call them. Every time you start a scene, you press space and... Ugh, I don't know how they got that noise, but holy shit, it is so good. Each librarian and guest has a light and speed die. You use this light to play the pages you have in your hand, and you get to play a page per a speed dice. After you select all the pages you want, you start combat and watch them fly. However, you always get to see what pages the guests are going to use and who they're going to target. You are forced to react to what is happening, allowing you to target an attack coming at you, or target an attack on a guest without it being one-sided. This will initiate a clash. Clashing is essentially a roll-off using the pages of both parties. When it's attack the attack, higher num wins. When it's attack the block, damage will be blocked entirely or reduced. When it's attack the dodge, the, if the dodge is higher than the attack, you dodge. But if you don't, you take the whole damage. When you deal damage, certain classes or pages have resistances, weaknesses, or essentially immunity against that damage type. And you deal damage not only to their health, but also to this yellow bar. That is the stagger bar. The stagger bar is basically a remote bomb that is attached to everyone that can be triggered by anyone. Librarians and guests also have resistance and weaknesses the whole nine yards to their stagger bar too. When the stagger bar hits zero, the person will become fatal to all damage, so it deals twice as much. And they'll also skip their next turn, so you can exploit a weakness on an enemy to break the stagger gauge and deal huge damage but you also have a stagger gauge to keep track of, so it's not entirely in your favor. Speaking of which, each fight you do to progress the game has you fighting against guests who are innately stronger than you, forcing you to find the weakness in their strategy to gain the upper hand. This is incredibly impressive game design, because not only does this give the player a preview of what you will get to use yourself, but when you get to use it, you already know the ins and outs of the cards you're getting because the AI has kicked your ass a million times using the same strategy. These fights do bring up an interesting idea though. In almost any game, you're always going from left to right. So that does bring the question, are we the bad guys? Like, are we doing something wrong here? Because we're going from right to left. Well, technically no, because in order to enter the library, you need to sign a paper that basically says, kill me, sign here. I mean, who is stupid enough to sign something like that? Wait. Wait, what was that? You can get anything if you win? Anything? <sighs> Alright. So, there are these things called abnormalities and, uh... They're here too, and you get to be up close and personal with them! 
Yay! Each fight is a gimmick fight, which normally I would be upset about, but not this time. It's like the equivalent of pushing a kid off of your side of the swing set. Essentially, these fight represents checkpoints for each department or floor of the library. After you win an abnormality fight, you usually get a new librarian for the floor and unlock a set of abnormality pages, allowing you to use those gimmicks that you learned against your enemies. So why are they red and green? After a clash, you gain a small emotion point. Green if you win, red if you lose. When enough points are gathered, the emotion level of the reception will grow and you'll get to choose an abnormality page. If you collect more green points than red, then you get green pages. Same with red ones. These pages are buffs that can turn the tide of the whole fight in your favor, and feel pretty cool while doing it. There's a few more things I could go into detail about, but I think I should save that. This game has a lot to cover, and I don't want to spoil everything for you. Now when I enter a library, I fear for my life by expecting hot librarians to try and kill me. And I can't tell if that's better or worse. Compared to other card games out there, this one has completely stolen a place in my heart, as the feeling of frustration I get can only be compared to Dark Souls, and the flow of gameplay can force you to get lost in the world from such a tiny area. The way that the storytelling works is masterful. It allows you to peek into a world and learn the ins and outs of it without having to fully explore it, which is something that I don't think any other game has properly achieved with their writing. There is not a single game out there that can do what this game does, and, you know, it's purely amazing. Project Moon is a company that keeps on surprising me again and again and again, and I can't wait to see what they do next. Thank you all so much for watching, and now if you would excuse me, I have some books I need to pick up.